Okay, so if you have your manual, manual, sorry, if you have your modules with you, uh, uh, please turn with me to this next subtopic, okay, which is the final subtopic, also known as the biggest, the biggest subtopic uh, in this chapter, okay, uh, which is uh, the gas loss. Okay, so uh, the first three subtopics, which is uh, thermal equilibrium, specific heat capacity, and specific latent heat, they are very interconnected. Uh. Okay, they are very interconnected um, because they have, you know, they are all related to uh, the heating curve and the cooling curve. Okay, but uh, this particular subtopic uh, called the gas laws, uh, uh, it's a little bit detached. Dia macam tidak berapa kaitan dengan the first three subtopics. It is still something to do with heat. Okay, it still comes under the heat part of physics, uh, but it also has a little bit to do with other things lah. Okay, but uh, we have to learn this uh, in this particular chapter because we have we have been talking about temperature and heat, you know, and the effect on heat, uh, on especially things that have to do with gas. Okay, so this is what this subtopic is all about. Okay, that's why we call gas laws lah. Okay, and before we begin, uh, a very important reminder lah. Okay, and I think that you should write it down very early in the very early yeah. Okay, the temperature. Okay, the unit lah. Okay, the unit for temperature is not no longer. <laughs> okay, it's no longer degree Celsius. Okay, only for this subtopic. Let me be very clear about this. We've always been using degree Celsius, degree Celsius, degree Celsius before this. Okay, but when we come to this particular uh, subtopic, okay, we are no longer talking about degree Celsius. Okay, we're talking about another unit which we will come to when the time is right. But I want you to write down at the very beginning over here, make a mental note that when we talk about the gas loss, the temperature unit now is no longer degree Celsius. I will introduce you to a new uh, unit and we will use that unit now for this set of laws. Okay, so please have that in mind when we are talking about these laws. Okay, so uh, as, uh, as a starter, okay, as a starter, we want to talk about understanding the gas law and we want to talk about the first law. Lah. Our main job today is to understand what the first law is. There are three gas laws altogether. Okay, but I think with the time that we have, I will only have time to explain to you about gas pressure, gas temperature and gas volume. Okay, and then I will talk about only the first law, which is Boyle's law. Okay, so to gain an understanding on the existence of gas pressure, let's take a look at this. Why does an inflated tire, why does an inflated tire, why does a tire that already punched, okay, why is it not able to support a car? Okay, so the normal answer that people will usually give uh, is because there is no air to support the car. Okay, tiada udara lah, that's very, that's very normal, right? Okay, there's no air to support the car. But the question that needs to be asked is, how does the air in the tyre support the weight of the car? Because air, you know, air is pretty light, you know. I mean, you don't, do you feel the air around you? Like, can you, can you feel the weight of the air? You can't, you can't feel the weight of the air. Yet, the air inside the tyre is able to support the weight of the car, the weight of your bicycle, okay, or the weight of your motorcycle, like if you if you are now riding a motorcycle, can? so the air inside the tyre, okay, can support the weight of you and the car, you and the motorcycle. So the question is, how is air able to do this? Since air is so ringan, you know, air is basically very light. How is it able to do this? And it does this, huh? by exerting a pressure <laughs> sorry please forgive my dog air exerts a pressure to the tire and this is a very important thing okay, we always talk about air pressure air pressure air pressure can but we need to understand how this air pressure thing works okay and so when we look at this uh, we compress a balloon with our hand let's say your balloon uh, you press the balloon right you find uh, that after you let go of your finger uh, what happens to the balloon the balloon will jump back up, right? <laughs> the balloon doesn't stay flattened. Okay, so what is it uh, that is pushing the balloon back? Okay, so let's say uh, you, okay, let's say this is the balloon and then you press. So when you press, it becomes a little bit, you know, <laughs> okay, fine, like you press over here, it, it goes back in. Uh. So what is it, what is it uh, 
that is pushing this out so that it you know so that it goes back to this original shape okay it is the air pressure so the air okay the air inside the balloon the air inside your tire uh, is not just there doing nothing you know it's actually doing a lot of work for you so that you can go wherever you want to go you know in the car the air inside the pressure is doing a lot of work by creating or exerting a pressure okay uh, sorry there is air pressure by exerting a force okay the air pressure exerts a force a force force okay exerts a force okay tekanan udara mengenakan satu daya it's a very important concept for us to understand okay the air is in the tire uh, for a purpose okay why do we pump air into the car why do we pump air into our balloons why do we pump air into uh, you know the your bicycle tire okay because it needs to support your weight and how does it support your weight by exerting a force Okay, so the question that needs to be asked after this is, how is gas pressure produced on the wall of a container? Now, this is a very important explanation. In order for us to understand the rest of this subtopic, uh, we have to properly understand how the gas or how the air inside a container, okay, can be a container, can be a tire, can be a balloon, lah, okay, dalam satu tempat tertutup, makan. How is the air inside that, that box? Okay, able to produce gas pressure. So, point number one. The molecules of a gas are always in random motion. So, the gas molecules, okay, if you remember the states of matter, uh, gas molecules are moving around freely and they're not just moving around freely, they are moving around randomly. They're very random movements. Like, they have totally no idea what they're going to do next. Okay, maybe it moves here and then uh, suka -suka hati, it moves here, la, then after that it moves here. La. If it bangs on the wall, maybe it will go back here or maybe it will deflect to another place. Okay, so it's very random. Okay, the molecules of a gas are always in random motion. And because of that, they will collide with other molecules. The best example to do this, la, okay, <laughs> sorry, the best example to do this la, is to get all of you Okay, everyone in this class, uh, I put you inside the room and I ask you to walk around randomly. Lah. Okay, no one, at, well, at least I'm sure there'll be some one or two people. Lah. But generally, if you ask people to walk around randomly, uh, they'll just go all over the place and you might bang into each other. Fun. Because, you know, it's so random, you cannot predict who the other or where the other person is going to go to. So because of the random motion, they will collide. Nah? They akan berlanggar antara satu sama lain uh, and also with the walls of the container elastically. Now we learned this in the second chapter, okay, elastic uh, collision. So they're not just going to bang one another, okay, they're not just going to collide with one another, they're also going to crash into the walls and then they will, you know, they will like, you know, uh, elastically move back. Lah. Okay, so every time a collision occurs, okay, there is a change in momentum of the gas molecule. Okay, every time a collision occurs, there is a change in the momentum of the gas molecule. And since force is the rate of change of momentum, therefore, the force acts on the wall of the container. When the gas molecule hits the container, there is going to be a change of momentum. It's going to change direction. It's going to change velocity. Lah. Okay, but a change in momentum always creates a force. Okay, bila dia berlanggar, dia akan mengenakan satu daya pada the bekas. Okay, and force, oh sorry, and pressure is defined as the force per unit area. This is something that you learn in Form 3. Okay, in Form 3, you learn the definition of force, uh, pressure, which is force divided by area. Okay, so if we consider... If you consider this molecule, when it crashes over here, it's going to exert a force on this area, a small area where they kenal. Okay, and because it exerts a force, okay, therefore there is a pressure over there. So therefore, the pressure of a gas uh, is due to the force of the collisions of the gas molecules with the walls of the container. When the gas molecules hit Okay, when it hits the container, it's going to uh, 
it's going to uh, result in the pressure on the container because there is a force on the container. Okay, so the pressure is what keeps you know the shape of your tire like that. So when there's no air inside your tire, okay, when there's no air inside your tire, means uh, there is less gas molecules, there's less air that is colliding with your walls of the tire. That's why your tire becomes very compass. Uh, sorry, sorry, your tire becomes very flat. Okay, the more gas there is inside the tire, you're gonna have a stronger pressure. Okay, you try to feel your you try when you pump tire next time, uh, you try to feel it to the maximum. You feel it's very keras. Okay, it's very hard because there's a lot of pressure in that tire. Okay, but if you under let's say you under pump, la, okay, you don't feel it enough air, you're going to feel it a little bit soft. You can maybe press it in a little bit more. Okay, because the gas pressure is less. Okay, so the collision, uh, the collision of the gas molecules with the wall of the gas container is the thing that causes uh, the gas pressure. Okay, it's a very important concept to understand. Uh, it takes a while for us to get this now because, as I said, all this uh, is like a, a level up kind of information uh, from what you already know. You know that when you pump more gas into the, pump more air into the tire, the tire will get harder. Okay, the question that you always need to answer is why? Why does it get harder? Why is it that when there is less air, okay, it becomes softer? Okay, so all this has to do with gas pressure. Okay, so let's say for example, uh, in this case, uh, let's talk about this activity number two. So let's say I have a mouth of, let's say I have a syringe over here. Uh, okay, sorry, I don't know if you can see this. I guess you can see. Uh, okay, so let's say you have a syringe over here. Okay, now let's say I, I create some air over here. Uh, Okay, and now I close this. Okay, I close this section. So there's no air going in and there's no air going out. Theoretically, lah. Okay, theoretically. <laughs> okay, there's no air going in, there's no air going out. So you find now that what <laughs> sorry, it's <laughs> very painful to press. Okay. So what happens to the volume and the air pressure okay in the syringe? Okay, when I push the piston in. So, what do you think? <laughs> Ouch. Sorry, yeah. Okay, let me show you again. Huh? Okay. So, when I close this, there's this amount of air in here. Okay. Now, when I press this in, what happens to the volume of the air? Anybody? Compared to this, lah, this original one, right? Okay, when I press this in, lah, what happens to the volume of the air? Still the same. Still the same? Really? Yeah? I don't know. <laughs> okay, good try, good try. Okay, I think it's a good try. Think about it. Huh? Uh, sorry, I can't really. Some people say increase. Increase? How does the volume of the air increase? Isi padu udara. Isi padu udara. Okay, the volume of the air. Take a look. Huh? Okay, when I close this, so there's this amount of air that is inside here now that is stuck. Lah. Okay, assuming that my finger got no holes. Huh? So when I push this in, uh, okay, look at the amount of space that the air has to move now. And that amount of space is what I mean by the volume. So is the volume increase or decrease or still the same? What's the answer? My <laughs> okay, the volume <laughs> decrease. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, see how my finger got pulled already. <laughs> okay. Sorry, yeah. Uh, okay. But what about the pressure? Take a look, huh? When I press this, huh? Okay. What happens to the pressure inside this one? Because there's less space for the air to move, the volume will decrease, but the pressure increase. The pressure will increase. And you know that the pressure increase because when I let go of this part, look at the syringe, it bounces back. Okay. What is what is causing this black thing huh, to go back? What do you think? The pressure. From? The air inside. The, the pressure from the air inside. Okay, my finger is still magically uh, bertahan. <laughs> okay, my finger, sorry, my finger is in so much pain right now, but fine, for science. Okay, let's, let's be painful for science. <laughs> sorry. Okay, so let me try again. Huh? So, volume, okay, less volume. Less volume, but bigger pressure because 
there is less space for the air molecules to move. If there is less space for the air molecules to move, they are going to, ouch, they are going to crash with these walls and my finger a lot more. Okay, but when I let it go, okay, when I let the piston go, okay, the air pressure will push back the descent because there's no more descent. Push out. Okay, interestingly, uh, let me tell you, uh, when I'm in this position, Okay, when I haven't pushed this in, uh, when I'm in this position, my finger not so painful, you know. But when I push it in, uh, okay, I can literally, <laughs> I'm literally suffering right now, but my finger feels a lot more painful because there is this pressure. Because again, uh, as I said, the volume is much less. And so the gas, the gas, um, the, sorry, the air inside this container is going to crash with my finger a lot. And because there is more crashing uh, since there is less space, so my finger feels a lot more painful. When I let this go, <sighs> it's, it's a lot less painful. Okay, if you have a syringe at home, uh, you need to try this. Lah. You will feel the difference, okay, especially if you use a bigger volume, right? Okay, if you use a bigger volume, then when you press inside, uh, okay, you can feel the pain. Ow! <laughs> okay, then when you let it go, okay, it feels less pain. So that pain, uh, ouch! <laughs> Sorry, that pain uh, is because of the pressure of the gas uh, that is pushing on your finger. The more force that the molecules exert on your finger, that's why I feel more pain when there is less volume. Okay, so what happens to the volume and the air pressure in the syringe when I push it in? It will decrease, the volume will decrease and the pressure will increase. So there are two variables that affect the behavior of the gas, which is volume and pressure. This is the first thing that we need to understand. That there are two things, actually there are three, but in this case, there are two. Okay, The volume and the pressure will affect the behavior of the gas. When there is a smaller volume, there is a bigger pressure. Okay, Finger in pain. When there is a bigger volume, okay, more space for the molecules to move, my finger will feel less pain because there is less pressure. Okay, if you have a syringe at home, make sure that it doesn't have the you know the sharp part line, you know, but you can play around with this. Now. Thank God I use a small syringe. Imagine if I use the big syringe. <laughs> Ouch. Okay, it'd be very painful. Now. Okay, second situation. Unfortunately, I have no fire here to show you, so we have to just think about this in this situation. Now. Okay, so when we heat the air in the test tube, now, what is going to happen to this chachai bowana, this colored water? Okay, it's going to go up. Okay, and so what happens to the temperature and the volume of the air? The temperature will increase, okay, because you're heating it up, right? So the temperature definitely going to increase, okay? And you will find uh, that this colored water over here, they are kind of to show that there is an increase in volume, okay? And so this brings us to another two variables uh, that affect the behavior of the gas, which is volume and temperature. Okay, when and we will discuss this in a little while, but just you know, it's just to uh, just for us to know, okay, what is the the what are the things uh, that affect the behavior of the gas? Okay, remember, I guess it's always moving randomly, and if you want a bigger pressure, you need to make it you know hit the wall a lot faster. Okay, so from the two activities above, state the three variables that affect the behavior of the gas, okay, which is volume pressure, and temperature. So these three are very important factors uh, that affect behavior of a gas. And this is what this whole subtopic is about. Okay, This whole subtopic is about studying these three, the relationships between these three, and how they affect the gas, uh, how they affect the gas uh, behavior. Okay, so take a look at this table. Huh? I want you to understand uh, this, this part. Oh, okay, it's all there. So the explanation based on the kinetic theory uh, is a very important thing. Lah. Okay, if it is volume, okay, then we find that the volume of the gas is equal to the volume of the container. If it is temperature, the average kinetic energy is directly proportional to temperature. And if it is pressure, when air molecules collide with the wall of the container, they rebound back. There is a change in momentum and force, and therefore the force per unit area is the gas pressure. Okay, these are again uh, kinetic theory explanations. Okay, which I would uh, actually uh, recommend that you memorize this. Uh, okay, that you remember this uh, or at least commit this to memory. 
Okay, when we're talking about the volume of the gas, how much gas is there is equal to the volume of the container, which is why I asked you just now. In this situation, okay, is this volume and this volume the same? No, it is not the same. Here, <laughs> sorry, here the volume is bigger of gas, nah? okay, here the volume is smaller. The amount of gas is the same. Don't get this wrong. The amount of gas is the same, but the volume uh, refers to the space that they are allowed to move in. Okay, just like if I put everybody in 4SC uh, into the day one, okay, into our school hall, so it's a big volume, right? Okay, so the volume of you, of all the students in, in the day one uh, is the same as the volume of the day one. Okay, and I put the same number of students in 4SC, uh, into a storeroom. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to fit 23 people into the storeroom, but fine. If all of you are in a storeroom, the number of gas, sorry, the number of gas molecules are, is the same. It is just that your volume is very vastly different. Okay, the amount of space that you have to move around is what we mean uh, by the volume of the gas. So the volume of the gas is the same as the volume of the container. High volume of gas, low volume of gas. The amount of gas is the same. Okay, it's just that the volume is different because depending on how much space they have. Okay, tolong jangan salah faham ini ya. Because a lot of people think that the volume of gas refers to how much gas is inside. No, huh? okay, the volume of gas is how much space that they are allowed to move in. Okay, so if there are 10 molecules in here, there are also 10 molecules in here. But over here, there is, <laughs> sorry, over here, the volume is bigger because there is more space for them to move in. Okay, temperature as we have established uh, since the first subtopic, temperature is the kinetic energy of the gas molecules. The bigger the temperature, the bigger the kinetic energy and therefore they will heat a lot faster. Okay, and then pressure is how much times, uh, how many times they bang or they collide against the wall. Okay, so in general, when we talk about pressure, volume and uh, temperature, the unit for pressure is Pascal, okay, and the symbol is PA. Uh, other symbols can include centimeter Hg. And this one, we will learn this when you go to Form 5 next year. Okay, this is Form 5, Chapter 2. Okay, we'll talk about that. But for our purposes today, we are talking about this. Okay, secondly, the unit for volume uh, is centimeter cube. It is the standard one, and the symbol is also centimeter cube. Sometimes volume is also given in liters, okay. But usually for our calculation purposes, we will use centimeter cube, lah. Okay. Now, if you remember at the beginning of this class, I said uh, the unit for temperature in this case is very different, okay. The standard unit is degree Celsius. Let's not even talk about degrees Fahrenheit, lah, okay? Let's not even go there, <laughs> okay? The standard unit, which almost everywhere in the world uses, is degrees Celsius. But for this particular subtopic, when we talk about gas law, we are talking about another unit which is called Kelvin, okay? Kelvin with the letter K. So I want you to, you know, kind of star this, lah, okay? And then right down here, this is the unit okay for temperature okay only in gas laws okay oh my goodness so sorry for my horrendous writing okay when we talk about gas law and we are talking about temperature we always refer to kelvin okay why why do we have to make our lives difficult <laughs> okay why can't we just use degrees celsius okay so there's a very long explanation for this which i will not go into today okay uh, remind me to answer this question uh, if you want to know lah. okay so let's talk about the first law okay the first law is Boyle's law and actually in doing this activity just now i have actually shown you Boyle's law okay what did we what did we conclude just now that when there is a big volume, there is less pressure. When I push this in, I decrease the volume. And so because of that, I increase the pressure. Okay, think about it. Huh? Sorry. Okay, think about it. In this situation, 
where there is sorry in the first situation where there is a lot nah, okay the volume is big but the pressure is small in this situation where i decrease to this one the volume is small remember volume is the amount of space for the air molecules to move in the air molecules are still the same same amount okay it's just the space is less okay so the volume is small but the pressure is big so what can you tell me uh, about the relationship between pressure and volume inversely proportional okay very good okay volume and pressure are inversely proportional to one another bila satu naik satu turun bila satu naik bila satu turun satu lagi naik and that okay ladies and gentlemen that is boyle's law okay so you can actually answer activity 3a dila what happens to the volume of the gas the volume of the gas decreases because there's less space for it to move in so based on kinetic theory explain what happens to the gas pressure okay the volume decreases so the gas molecules are nearer to one another okay this is the point that is very important the rate of collision between gas molecules and wall of container increases what this means uh, okay rate of collision uh, means how much how many times they are going to collide with the wall okay in in one second Okay, that means they are going to collide more lah. Okay, if you are going to use uh, simple language, huh, means they are going to, you know, they are going to belanggar lebih banyak kali. Okay, because there is less space for them to move. Very logical. Okay, we can actually do this huh, if in school, huh, I will actually do this. <laughs> I'll bring you all to the day one, I'll put you on the day one and ask you to move around. Okay, you will find huh, that unless you purposely, unless you don't move randomly, huh, you won't crash into each other so often. Yeah, I put all the 23 of you are in a storeroom. Okay, yeah, fine. No need storeroom. Let's just <laughs> maybe in the Bilik Bahasa Japan. Okay, the tiny, tiny room over there. Right? Put all 23 of you there. Sure, you will collide with one another one because you've got not that much space to move. Okay, and because you have more chance of colliding with one another, therefore your pressure will increase. Okay. You think about it in real life, huh? it's true. When you're free to move in the day one, makan, you don't feel so pressure. But imagine if all 23 of you, huh, I put inside the Bilik Bahasa Japan, huh, sure you will be very angry. Huh? <laughs> sure you will be very stressed. Okay, because oh, I've got not enough place to move. Okay, and I'll be like always crashing with one another. Okay, and yeah, so pressure increases when there is less space for the gas molecules to move. So the relationship between gas volume and gas pressure, as Nikki mentioned just now, it is inversely proportional. And this brings us to Boyle's law. Okay, take a look very carefully. Yeah. Volume of the gas is inversely proportional, sorry, to the gas pressure, okay, if the mass and the temperature are constant. Okay, this, are, this is a very, very important uh, very very important statement that needs to be in, that needs to be included. Later at the end of this subtopic, uh, I will bring all these three uh, laws together, and you will see how it is explained. Uh. Okay. For now, okay. Buat masa sekarang, saya mau kamu ingat ini sahaja dulu. Let's not let's worry about the constants once later, uh. Okay. But the volume of the gas is inversely proportional to the gas pressure, as I've shown in this syringe. Okay, all right, let me continue. Huh? So this next one actually is a repeat. Nah? I'm just repeating everything that I've been saying since the beginning. You don't have to copy this because you've actually already copied this in this question just now. Okay, based on the kinetic theory, explain what happens to the gas pressure. Volume decrease, gas molecules are nearer to one another. So the, no, there is more chance to collide with one another and also with the wall. So because of that, the pressure will increase. Okay, so let me reiterate. Uh, when the volume of gas is decreased, the number of molecules per unit volume is decreased. This is very technical. Uh, okay, but it just simply means that there is less space for the molecules to move around. So the molecules are closer to one another and because of that, they will collide more often. This is the key, this is the key explanation. Okay, they will collide more often. Mereka akan lebih kerap berlanggar dengan dinding bekas. Sorry, yeah, this is dinding bekas, not dinding bekar, orang masih bekar. Okay, dinding bekas. They are going to crash with the wall of the container 
okay, more often. Okay, lebih banyak pelanggan. Because there's less space to move. Okay, and so because of that, the increase in the rate of collision results in the increase of pressure. Because pelanggarannya adalah lebih kerap, okay, there is more crashing uh, to one another. So this causes a increase in pressure. Okay, you don't have to copy this down as I said before uh, because you've already actually done this. Lah. Okay, but what I want to show you is uh, sorry, uh, what I want to show you is a few videos to show you how this actually works. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. So in here, okay, in here you're going to see this. Uh, so this is a, this is a balang. Okay, this is a, what we call a, a balang gas. I don't know what is it called in Malay, uh, in English, I can't remember. But what it does is it maintains, you know, the air inside this balang. Okay, so there's this air over here and they're going to actually increase uh, the, the, they're going to change the pressure, okay, inside the balang. Okay, take a look, huh? hold on. Okay. Okay, so what you're seeing is that white color thing, uh, which I don't really know what it is. I think it's probably cotton. So you find that the white color thing, uh, the volume is increasing and decreasing. When it grows, when it grows, uh, it is actually increasing. The volume is increasing. Why is the volume increasing? Because the gas pressure in here is decreasing. So they, I'm sure that they are doing something at the background here to decrease and to mengasi naik dan mengasi turun the gas pressure lah. Okay, but that also affects this. So it works both ways. Huh? In this example, what I was changing was the volume of the gas. Okay, but in this example, in this video, they are changing the pressure of the gas. And so the relationship stands, you know, it's not a one-way street, it is a two-way street. You change the pressure, you change the volume. You change the volume, you change the pressure. Okay, so it works both ways. So when the thing was growing just now, it is because the volume was increasing. And the volume increased because the gas pressure inside here decreased. Okay, and that's what we see over here. Okay, let's take a look at another one. So these are marshmallows. <laughs> I feel very sad for these marshmallows because I love because I like I love marshmallows. Okay, so these are marshmallows over here. Okay, and take a look at the marshmallows. So again, uh, they are putting the marshmallows inside a uh, air chamber, okay, which is filled with air. Lah. And right now, the marshmallows look very compressed because there's a lot of gas pressure. So the marshmallows are, you know, very, very compressed. The pressure of the gas is high, so the marshmallow volume is low. So you can see this. Okay. Okay. If you can see, uh, the marshmallow is actually, you know, like growing up. Lah. Because they are reducing the gas pressure. Okay, so if you saw just now, uh, the marshmallows were originally very like, flat. Okay, because the air pressure, the pressure of the air uh, that is pushing them down is very big. But when we decrease the air pressure, okay, we take out some of the air, there's less air pressure. So the marshmallows are able to, uh, you know, able to expand again, okay, because of the less air pressure that is in the gas chamber. Okay, so this is something that we've already done. I uh, can show you also, I think. Oh, wait, sorry. Okay. So this is the same thing, huh? when you pull out the thing, okay, you find that. Uh, so bigger volume, this is the tabalik, huh? you're changing the volume and what happens to that is uh, when you change the volume, uh, the pressure okay, is the one that is affected. So again, huh? both examples show you that this is a two-way street. Okay, It's not a one-way huh, where you can only change the volume, then the pressure will be affected. No, you can change it the other way also. That's why the, the, the relationship is two ways, huh? Okay, one and the other. Okay. Okay. Take a look at this. Huh? So when you press it in, okay, you're reducing the volume. 
when you reduce the volume, I don't know if you can see this, but actually the... Okay, the balloon uh, is actually getting smaller. Okay, when I put the balloon in here, okay, let's say originally... Okay, let's say originally I put the balloon in here, right? Then when I push it in, uh, okay, I push it in, I make the volume become less and the pressure becomes more. So that's why the balloon is going to decrease in size because the air pressure inside here is pushing the balloon to become smaller. Okay, and that's what she was trying to show over here. Lah. Okay, which if you have a syringe that is big enough, <laughs> mine is too tiny. Lah. If you have a big enough syringe, can, actually you can do this at home. Okay, uh, so maybe if any of your parents are doctors or they work in a clinic uh, or they work in a hospital, you can ask them for a huge syringe like this. Okay, sorry, this is tiny, huge syringe like the one in this video. Lah. You can try it out. Eh? Okay, so today what I want you to do is I want you to, uh, I want you to look at this experiment. Lah, okay, and uh, this experiment, unfortunately, yeah, we, I don't know when we can go back to school, but the important thing is I want you to be able to draw this graph. Okay, so. This is the experiment to determine the relationship between pressure and volume. So observe the change in the air bubbles released by the fish as they rise towards the surface. So let's make a suitable inference. Don't know. Okay. Oh, thank God for some answers. Okay. So inference, uh, the in physics, uh, okay, in physics, uh, the key word for the inference is the word depends on. Okay, depends on. Some teachers will teach you effects. Lah. Okay, you can also say the same thing. Now, in this case, uh, in this particular case, we know that we are talking about pressure and volume. Okay, so my question to you is, in the case of this fish, uh, does the pressure depend on the volume? Or does the volume depend on the pressure? Let me ask you, option A, option B. Which one correctly explains this situation with the fish and the one bubble? Okay, or actually not just the fish. Let's say you found pee under the water. If you fart under the water, also this will happen. You have one bubble, okay, and as it goes towards the surface, it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, the same thing. So which option is correct, A or B? Pressure depends on the volume or volume depends on the pressure. B, volume depends on the pressure. Okay, very good, Rahman. So B is the correct inference. Because in this one, the volume is the one that is changing. Then the volume gets bigger and it is because the pressure is getting lesser. Okay, the nearer you are to the surface of the water, your water pressure is less. Okay, so this one is volume depends on pressure. Okay, so this is how you write an inference. Okay, volume depends on pressure. Okay, next, how do you write the hypothesis? Now, the way we write hypothesis uh, is the same way as I have taught you uh, how to write a relationship in a, chap in a paper 2 question. How do we write relationship? The lower the pressure, the bigger the air bubble. Okay, very good. The lower the pressure, okay, the bigger, sorry, <laughs> the higher, okay, the higher, lah. okay, the, uh, not the air bubble, I mean, you can say the air, the air bubble, but since we're talking about pressure and volume, we're talking about volume and pressure, so we use the same words again, okay, the lower the pressure, the bigger the volume. Okay, and this one, okay, and this one uh, has to follow in the correct sequence, uh, okay, because as I said just now, Boyle's law, uh, it can work both ways. It can be pressure depends on volume and volume depends on pressure. Either way, also can. So we have to look at the situation to see, okay, in this situation, the one that is, <clears throat> the one that is a responding variable uh, is the volume. Okay, that's why over here, identifying the variables is very important. What is the manipulated variable? It is the pressure. Okay? And the responding variable is the volume. 
Okay, very, very important thing. Huh? So take a look at A, take a look at B, and take a look at C. What I want you to do is if you have a highlighter, huh, I want you to highlight it with different colors. Okay, highlight it with different colors. So let's say, uh, uh, okay, volume, uh, I'm going to highlight yellow. Okay, look at how, look at where I position the, uh, the, this one in the inference and the hypothesis. Okay, and then the pressure, pressure because it is the manipulated variable, I'm going to highlight it blue. Okay, so pressure is blue, pressure is blue, pressure is blue. So, if you do not remember or if you do not know how an inference and a hypothesis is written, learn from this today. Okay, the manipulated variable and the responding variable helps you to write the inference and the hypothesis. Take a look. The responding variable depends on the manipulated variable. The bigger or smaller, okay, the manipulated variable the bigger or smaller the responding variable okay take a look at this color coding because this helps you to write an inference and a hypothesis in the easiest possible manner okay i have we i mean we have already covered enough tutorials uh, for you to write the hypothesis la. And the bigger the this the smaller the that the bigger the this the bigger the that okay but in a uh, paper three question in an experiment okay whenever we write an inference and we write a hypothesis we use these keywords okay depends on for inference and for the hypothesis is the bigger the the bigger the lah. okay but look at the positioning uh, the positioning is very important okay for inference uh, responding variable comes first for hypothesis the manipulated variable comes first Okay, we do this with enough practice uh, and you will get it done. Okay, it's the most important thing. Sorry, the most important thing uh, is to make sure that your variables are correct. You identify the correct variables and usually the aim will help you. Uh. Okay, the aim is to determine the relationship between pressure and volume. So one must be manipulated and the other one must be responding variable. Okay, so we learn now, uh, we learn how to write inference and hypothesis and we keep practicing until we get it okay so the constant variable is temperature okay the constant variable is temperature simply because when i was telling you about the gas law just now uh, you remember this volume of gas is inversely proportional to the gas pressure if the mass and the temperature are constant okay so i prefer to use the word temperature i guess you can use mass also if you want lah. okay because these are memang uh, concern. This is from Boyle's law. Okay, and so we have this setup. Uh. This setup is uh, you have a syringe over here. Okay, just like this, and you connect it to a rubber tube, which is connected to a Borden gauge. Okay, a Borden gauge uh, is an instrument that uh, that measures gas pressure. Okay, an example of a Borden gauge that you will commonly see uh, is if you go and pump tire. Uh, in the petrol station, you know you pump tire, then you have the meter over there, and then you tank, 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 tank until you, until you finally reach the pressure that you want, right? Okay, that is an example of a Borden gauge. It tells you how much the gas pressure is inside the tire. Okay, so that is the use of a Borden gauge. Okay, so what it will happen is we will push the piston. Okay, so it's hundred centimeter uh, cube of air. Okay, and then you reduce it nah, by 80, 60, and 40, and 20. Okay, so what do you expect to see? Okay, if you have 10, if you have the, the volume ah, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, let me ask you ah, the pressure, what do you expect? Do you expect the pressure to be increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. Okay, you expect the pressure to be decreasing because Boyle's law states that when the volume is increasing, the pressure is decreasing. So you expect that. Okay. Now, in this experiment, you are also required to calculate the value of 1 over V. Okay. Can I have five different people? Oh, you know what? I'm going to <laughs> uh, I'm going to ask somebody to I'm going to ask five different people for this. 0 0.025. Who is this? Huh? 
Trevor, 0 0.025. Okay, good. Next. 0 0.1. Okay, 0 0.1. Um, 0 0.05. Is this Steffi? Yeah. Okay, 0 0.05. Hmm. 0 0.03. Okay, 0 0.03. I think it's good enough. Ken? Ivers, you're the last one. 1 over 50. 0 0.02. Wow, oh, the voice is so small. 0. Point... 0 0.02. Okay, 0 0.02. <laughs> okay. So uh, one thing, uh, one thing that needs to be done. Okay, one thing that is very important. Thanks everyone uh, for this one. One thing that is very important is that you need to, uh, especially kahala, because uh, kahala, uh, oh, so yeah, these people are uh, that the there is no zero behind. Actually, this one who was this? Uh, Joey, this is Ling Tian Ling San San, right? Zero point zero three three. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you can actually write the three over here, lah. Zero point zero three three, okay. But the rest of you, uh, look at what is happening in this table. I am making everything the same decimal place, okay. Because we have a few, uh, like say for example, Trevor's answer just now was zero point zero two five, and it's ngam ngam zero point zero two five. There's three decimal places over here, so the rest of you will have to adjust. Okay, to make sure that you add enough zeros so that there are always three decimal places. So please put over star, please put a star over here in your module and write down there. Make sure, okay, tolong pastikan na, the decimal places are the same. Okay, in each column. Column, ah. Okay, that's why this one 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, no problem. Because, you know, in the same column, if they have no decimal places, all also no decimal places. No problem. Okay, so uh, besides learning this one, we are also learning how to do the, <laughs> how to do this one. Lah. Okay, sorry, uh, let me continue. Uh. So the pressure reading, this is an example of a pressure reading and I want to give you this, uh, this one. Uh. Please copy these values down. Okay, and... What I want you to do for your homework today, okay, for your homework today, yeah. Do you see the two empty pages of graph paper? Okay, two empty pages of graph paper. I want you to draw the graph of this one. Okay, draw the graph of P against V and P against 1 over V. Okay, draw the graph of P against V. So this one you draw in page 109. Okay, this one you draw in page 109 and this one you draw in page 110. Okay, I want you to draw the graphs. Okay, and then what I would like you to do is I want, uh, I would like you to send it uh, to a padlet. Okay, don't send it to the telegram because this is this is a homework that I want to analyze. Lah. Okay, so send it to a padlet, which I will send you the link later. So you take a picture of the graph, just the graph. Okay, take a picture of the graph, send both graphs uh, into the padlet. Okay, and then uh, and then we will we will discuss this uh, on Friday. I want to see the graphs because I also want to know uh, whether you know how to draw graphs. Okay, let me show you what I mean uh, by the padlet. Uh. Hold on. Uh. Which is this? Okay, so this is the one that I did with form 5. Lah. Okay, so if you can see. Okay, so this is a padlet that I will set up. Okay, and uh, this is the name. Sorry, can you see what I'm showing now? Okay, so this is the padlet that I've set up. This is for 5ST, lah, my form 5 class. And so what they did was for every graph that they draw, Okay, they will upload the this one. Lah. So what you do uh, is you click on this plus. Okay, then you upload the photo or whatever. You can use your phone to do this, uh, not necessarily uh, this one. So you upload the photo, write the subject, uh, write your name. Okay, and then uh, graph 1 or name and then graph 2. Graph 1 is page 109. Graph 2 is page 110. Okay, graph 1 is P against V. Graph 2 is P against 1 over V. Okay, I want to see whether you all know how to draw graphs because this is something that uh, 
is in chapter one lah. Okay, so you write a name and then graph one, and then if you want, you can write something beautiful lah if you want lah. Okay, I am handsome or I am pretty or whatever lah. Okay, then after that you publish. Okay, so everybody's graphs will be able to be seen by everybody who is assessing this padlet lah. Okay, which is totally fine by me, but. On Friday, uh, I want to take a look at your graphs and I want to see how we can improve your graph drawing. Okay, so please make sure that you draw these graphs and submit it into the Padlet. I will give you the link inside our group uh, in a little while. Okay, and then after that, uh, you can just submit your graphs into that Padlet over there. Okay? Mm -hmm.